It's been a couple days now since we uh, glued that arm on. So let's just uh, take some things off of him here. Unstrap that clamp. Just check it out. Looks like we got a pretty good weld there. So now the next thing is to uh, get my glove on. Finger guard. And to finish up the area where the arm joins the uh, body. And that shouldn't take too long. Same time I'll cut away all that dirt left by the clamp. Now up here where it joins, we have grain running this way. And on the body we have grain running this way. So as you're working in these areas right here on each side, you have to be pretty careful that you don't uh, chip out the other side while you're carving the one side. It's just sort of, you carve over here, you run up against this you carve over here, you run up against this. You just have to be careful and plan your strokes a little. First thing I want to do is I want to bring this shoulder, top of the shoulder, into the body to where it matches up here. And again, that grain runs across there. So you just sort of have to be careful as you're carbon through there. That's what we're after right there where I get that nice smooth transition. Just like that. And by putting the uh, neckerchief up there the neckerchief will sort of hide that join, at least up there on the top, and that's good. Pretty good there, so let's kind of round off this area right here. So we get the same kind of slope as we have on this side. Looks pretty good. We still got a little bump right there. Of course, you always have to be careful of these two fingers sticking out there now. Those are prime candidates to be broken off if you're not careful. So we're getting there. 
Well, we had a major uh, video malfunction here just a second ago and lost quite a bit of video, I guess. Anyway, in what we lost, let me just review it here. What we lost was my detailing this area up here and finishing the arm and neckerchief. Basically, it wasn't anything different than what I did over here. Uh, I just added the wrinkles coming up from the arm, fanning out from the joint of the arm on each side, front and back. See how they, they come up this way, then they're brought in a little closer, and then a little closer still. And then the same thing over here on this arm. Far, closer, closer still. What we're trying to do is we're sort of disguising this joint line as much as we can while still keeping it uh, authentically accurate the way folds would really react. After that, I went ahead and uh, did the uh, folds on his rolled up sleeve. See how I tied this one in here, made it look like it goes down under this one here? That gives you that rolled up appearance, and that's what we want. And then to finish it off, I just used the gouge and put a couple of gouge lines in there coming up. Uh, just to give it some deep, a little extra detail. After that, I did the neckerchief, which I'd basically done already. Let me just put a groove in here. I did the back, put a knot in here. I did, did my knot first, and then I've just brought up these uh, grooves, tied them into the knot, and did the detailing on the part of the neckerchief that hangs down. And again, I use my gouge just to emphasize the folds and the cloth and to break up the, the surfaces. All right? I hope that explains it enough. I'm sorry I lost that video. Okay, now. Anyway, we're finished with the carving now. Monty's finished. Monty's created. So the next step now is to take the body over to the Santa Flex wheel and sand it all off, which will clean up all the dirt and everything off of the, these little ridges. Get him ready for the paint table. Be real careful when you're sanding the hand. Support it as you're running it through that wheel. And like I say, be very careful. And uh, after, well, before you sand him, excuse me, I'll be back up here a minute. Before we sand him, I'm going to burn on the detail. And I've done that before, so I don't think I need to show you that again. I'll explain, explain what I did after I've done it in the next set of videos in the next post, okay? Otherwise, this video project's <laughs> going to turn into a... A mini-series almost. Okay, so anyway, he's done. Like I say, we got to burn the burn the detail on him, take him to the Sandiflex wheel, sand him down, get him nice and polished up, ready for the paint table. One more thing we have to do is to add some jewelry to him. Now, as you can see, I made some spurs for him. I'm not going to cover that because I've covered that already. I've shown you how to make these spurs. Uh, there's a uh, just go back and review one of the past videos, and I, I think it's in there. It tells you how to do that. We made two of them, and they just slip into these pockets, which I burn on his shoes. There and there, okay. The next thing we need to do is make the conchos and the leather ties for the straps on his chaps. Now we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So we have to make six, six of these. And I've already gone and done that. Here's one right here. What this is made from, it's made from a low dome tack. These are tacks I get from an Indian supply house. They're just decorative tacks. And it has a piece of flattened steel wire on top of them that's silver soldered to the top of the tack. Now I get these tacks 
at a couple places. When I'm up in the Rapid City, South Dakota, I always go over to the Prairie Edge, which is a big Indian store right downtown Rapid City. And if you go to Rapid City and you don't go to this store, you're truly missing something because this is one of the most beautiful stores I've ever been in. And upstairs, back behind the book section, they have a whole big room full of craft supplies that you can go in there and rummage around in and find all sorts of stuff. But anyway, this, uh, this is their catalog. They'll send you a free one, and it's just full of beautiful things. Tons of reference material. If you like Native American uh, plains clothing and gear, ask for it. It's www prairieedge.com Another place you can get them is from Crazy Crow, Crazy Crow Trading Post. They have a website. It's crazycrow.com. That's pretty easy to remember. And this has even more stuff than uh, the Prairie Edge. You can buy your low dome tax in here. Like I say, this thing is just crammed full of Native American uh, supplies and things. See, there's someone using low dome tacks to decorate their uh, war club. There's just all sorts of stuff in here. They come in little packages like this. This is from Prairie Edge. And I think these are from uh, Crazy Crow. They're the same thing. Make sure you get low dome tax. There's high dome tax and low dome tax. Get low dome tax. They come in a couple sizes. You can get the larger ones or the smaller ones. The high dome tax are just too uh, high domed to make good looking conchos. Okay? So get the low dome tax. All right. These are the larger version. They work out fine for this size figure. So what I do is I'll take a low dome tax. I take my little emery block here and I'll just polish off the shiny surface. Just like that. See there? That'll give me a nice nice surface to solder to and something a little rougher for the paint to hang on to. Okay? Now I've drilled me a little hole in the table and I'm just going to set that thing right there like that. Now, to make the leather ties, well, how I make those is I use, this is 18-gauge steel wire. You can find it down at the home center. I just take a piece of it, and I flatten it out on my little anvil here. you want right there okay this uh, uneven appearance looks good at least I think it does so don't try to make it all even I think it looks great uneven like that all right the next thing is we measure out about the length that we want which is about right there and I don't have my needle nose pliers which is right behind Judy over there thank you just grab it right there and bend it down and around like that and then squeeze it together like that and then cut it off. I always cut it off uneven. By that I mean make one a little longer than the other and kind of form them into the shape you want. Okay? So there we've got that. Now like I say you need six of these things. Okay? Thanks, Judy. She just plugged in my solder in there, and I forgot about that. So anyway, now what we want is we want to solder that to this tack. So quite a while ago, I went down to Radio Shack, and they brought me this little uh, soldering kit. This is silver solder. Use silver solder. Don't use the other solder. It's too soft. It won't last. Silver solder will... Uh, Hold that piece of wire on there solidly forever, and that's what you want. They give you a little bottle of flux, 
and a coil of silver solder which will last you forever. Okay, so I'll just take this and I'll just put a little drop of that on top of there. And then I'll just take this and just kind of get some of that flux on here. Position that right in the center like that. Just like that. Can you see that real good? And now I have to wait for my soldering arm to heat up because I forgot to plug it in. So as soon as that gets hot, we'll fix this thing. Okay, well we're waiting for this thing to heat up completely. Just so I'd show you. Here's a high dome tack. See how much higher that is than one of these here. See there? It just doesn't look as good as these low dome ones. And here's the smaller version of the low dome tack. See, it's a lot smaller than the other one. This is good for smaller cowboys. So between this size here and that size there, you can pretty well cover a cowboy from, oh, say this tall, up to as high as mine is here. So anyway, I think this thing is heated up. So let's just get us a little bit of silver solder there on the end of that thing. Hold that thing in place. Just hold this together and let it flow blow out just like that, okay? And that's all there is to it. And there we have a nice uh, nice concho and leather tie. And what I'll do now is uh, wipe off that old excess, excess flux and give this a little spray with some uh, etching, self-etching primer. Always use that self-etching primer. It works great. A lot better than the just plain primer. Okay? And that'll do that. Now, like I say, we need six of these things. Now, just a little point here that I forgot to do, which made my job a little more difficult. Not impossible, but it did make it more difficult. Is when I was carving the body and working on him, I wasn't thinking about these. And because of that, I forgot to drill my holes for the post on these tacks. So I can't drill them now that I glued that arm on there so I had to sort of just punch them in there. And to do that I had to cut them off, a couple of them here. I had to cut off and repoint to where I can stick them up in there later on and force them into place. Okay, it's no big deal, but anyway, it's just a little thing that uh, had I remembered to do that before I glued that arm on, I wouldn't be having that problem. Another thing you have to remember is over here where we've got a sidearm hanging, if you don't plan it correctly, that sidearm will hang down and bump up against that uh, concho and hold it out away from the body. Well, in this case here, I was lucky because my sidearm comes up flat against his belt and the concho sets right in behind there. Okay? What you want to do is uh, when you're setting these conchos is uh, you dish out this area here so this concho will set right back in there flat against the surface of the chap. That's where it's going to look good. And when you apply them, start on the bottom, stick this one in first, second, and third. You can't do it the opposite direction. It won't work. Okay? Now there's a couple more little things we could do. We could add a little brad here uh, where the flap of the pocket comes down. But I'm just going to paint that because it'll be so small. Paint will make it look good. All right? You'll have a couple buttons up here, but paint will take care of that too. So, he's finished. 
And uh, once I burn on the detail, I'm not going to show you burning on this detail. I'll show you afterwards uh, all the detail I burn on, but uh, I can't cover everything over over and over again with each video I make. Or we'd just be here forever. This thing will go on forever. And I certainly don't want that because I've got other things I want to do. So anyway, Monty's all done. And uh, the, in the next uh, series of videos, we'll start painting. I'll show you the burn, burning uh, detail I, I added, and then we'll take him over to the paint table and start giving him some color. Okay?